How's it going folks? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I am going to install a Timney aftermarket trigger into my dad's Browning X-Bolt. This specific model is the stainless steel. Uh, it is chambered in 300 short mag and uh, overall pretty decent rifle. It is a little on the spindier side but <clears throat> if you shot Browning's then you know how heavy the trigger is. This one is roughly four pounds, maybe four or five. Uh, check the chambers clear. Nothing in the magazine for all you safety freaks. And uh, whatnot. So if you listen here slowly, I'm pushing, putting pressure on it. Pressure, more pressure. There we go. It finally breaks. So pretty heavy. I'll uh, grab my uh, uh, scale in a bit and uh, see what the actual pull weight is. But uh, I just don't like it. I know my dad doesn't really like it. Uh, the Savage uh, Eki trigger is actually a way better trigger than uh, what comes on the X-Bolts. Personal opinion, uh, personal preference, but I believe that the Eki trigger is better on the Savage. And uh, all of my other guns have aftermarket triggers on them so once you sh in my opinion once you start shooting aftermarket triggers these stock triggers just suck like really bad so even for a hunting situation um some might argue that the heavier pull weight is safetyer is a little more safe than having a lighter trigger however most of us we hike without a rifle a uh, <clears throat> bullet chambered into rifle so I'm not too worried about that and, uh, and as you were taught you know don't put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready to shoot so always got to think about safety and whatnot but today we're trying to make this gun shoot better uh, I think it shoots right now just about half inch with the loads I put through it nothing very nothing insane very moderate load and uh, it just shoots really well for what I've done with it. So today we're gonna go through and put a new trigger in it and uh, I wanna show you guys the whole process so that you guys can do it to your X-Pulse if you are interested. So yeah, enough blabbering, let's get to it. All right, before we get started, I just wanted to sh show you guys the actual pull weight on this thing. So again, rifle is empty. We are using a cheap Wheeler trigger scale. Uh, it goes from 8 ounces up to 8 pounds and uh, from my experience it's been rather accurate I've tested it with all my other triggers so pretty accurate for what it is and uh, we'll take a couple ratings here so I'll pull it straight back finally breaks I don't know if you guys can see that but it reads 4 pounds so do it again. Four and a half pounds. One more. Just to see what we average around. Yep, yeah, that one was just right under four pounds. So average is about a four pound trigger pull. Very heavy in my opinion, but some of you guys might like it. I don't. I know my dad doesn't like it. So we're gonna put a new trigger in it. He doesn't know that I'm putting a new trigger in it. Uh, this is a late uh, birthday, Father's Day gift. Early, I guess it's a late birthday and a early Father's Day gift for him. So this is the one that we'll be using. Browning X-Bolt from Timney. It is the model 603. And uh, that's me right there. Pull weight, I had it set at two and a half pounds. So we'll see how accurate that is. And then it's tested by Brett and it was shipped out a few days ago, so. Pretty cool. We'll go through and uh, see what it takes to put one of these sucker in. All right, so you guys can see I have the uh, <clears throat> barreled action out of the stock. 
Uh, one thing I just want to go over before we uh, take the uh, stock mechanism off this uh, barreled action and put on the Timmy trigger. Uh, you can see that <clears throat> with the bolt close and the gun in safety right now, you see this little button right here. Uh, basically right now the bolt is locked. Once you put the uh, gun in safety, it locks the bolt down. However, with, with the uh, uh, browning uh, design, you're able to open the bolt by pushing this button down and just uh, opening the bolt with your gun still on safety. So that's just a nice little safety feature that browning uh, designed onto their X-Bolt. I don't know if it goes, I'm pretty sure it's the same for all the Expo, I mean this is a stainless steel series, there's like a whole bunch of like Browning Expo like brands and or like little whatever design it's called but I'm pretty sure it's all the same. So close it, put it on fire, that little button goes away, you're now able to open this belt freely, put it back on safety. It locks it and the only way to open the bolt in the safety position is by pushing this button down. So that's a safety feature that Browning designed. It's also good to have for when you're bushwhacking. Uh, once you put this gun on safety, your bolt will not open. However, once you install the Timney trigger, you lose that feature. So one thing to consider. Um, I feel like it's not a big deal to me. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal to my dad either because a lot of times we hike without a round in the chamber and um, <clears throat> I feel like the trigger pull, the uh, the weight of the trigger pull alone is a big like improvement over losing this little uh, extra safety feature right here. So just something to consider. Uh, just, you know, so you don't get su be surprised when you install your Timmy trigger and your button now just lays flat. I mean, your bolt will open uh, <clears throat> with a gun in safety or off of safety. It doesn't matter. Once you install this thing, your bolt can open anytime. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're hunting or just whenever you're messing around with that, uh, with the rifle. So... Uh, let's go ahead and take off the uh, stock trigger and put in the new one. All right, so sorry about the weird angles. Uh, I'm kind of in a little tight corner here, so uh, <clears throat> this is what it's gonna be. Just gonna be should be fairly quick and whatnot. So what you'll need is a hammer of some sort. Uh, the Timney instructions call for a uh, 116 punch which is this guy but I feel like it's a little too big for uh, the punches to, to punch out the little uh, studs there so I'm using a 132nd that's how you say it but so I use two uh, Timney only says one in their instructions but I feel like having a smaller one is uh, a lot easier to punch out the uh, the studs right here and uh, whatnot, so we're gonna take out the bolt real quick. It's on safety. Take out the bolt. Set this guy aside. And obviously, you guys see we already have the Timney trigger out of the box. Uh, this is basically what you get once you open the box. That's how it looks like. Um, very simple. So. The instruction says to punch out the two studs right here from left to right. So we're going to push it. If you face the gun up towards uh, how you're going to shoot it, right is where the, the bolt is. Left is on the opposite side. So we're going to grab my one thirty second inch punch. Uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can grab something. I guess I'll use my dog's old jersey to so that we don't get a lot of contact on this on the scope on the bench and uh, whatnot I'm slide that up forward a little bit move stuff out of the way 
you have a vice, it'd probably be easier, but uh, I don't in my reloading area, so this is gonna have to do. So again, make sure your gun's clear, open, and uh, there's nothing in there, so. We got two cameras rolling, so hopefully we'll catch the angles that you guys need to see. So again, we got a punch right here, and one another punch right here. So we'll start with the one up front. Oh, this is the bigger one. Grab the 132nd right here. This is a smaller one. And just go slow. And once you get it started, your the smaller punch will fit right into that hole. The 116th that uh, Timney uh, recommended does not fit in there. So that or maybe I just had them in the wrong spot. I don't know. But having two is good. This one must, I'm pretty sure it's 116 because it was in the 116 spot unless I mixed them up. Uh, sometime whenever the last time I used my punch set but just grab one that fits if anything give it a slight tap should feel it coming through okay you can punch it all the way out it's not gonna hurt anything and it might be easier to keep track of so there's one. I'll punch out the other one. And there's two. All right. There we have the uh, stock trigger out. Now you can take off the uh safety mechanism it's basically held on by a spring so it just goes literally you just pop this piece off right here off of the plastic right here that slides up and down and then just swing it around pop it out simple as that and this piece flip it over and it just falls out like that super simple super easy to remove on the install we're gonna leave it out because we're gonna be flipping the gun around and we'll be punching it from the other side where this side is gonna be sticking out so just to avoid damaging it we're just gonna leave it off it's not gonna hurt it you could take it off before you uh, uh, hammer out the uh, stock st uh, trigger or you could do what I did and just leave it on So now we got the stock trigger out. I'm gonna grab the Timney right there. Super simple. Just line these holes up. And then just slide right into place. And then now we're gonna flip it around. So the instruction says to punch the stud from uh, left to right. As you can see here, the studs have grooves on. I don't know if the camera's gonna catch that, but you can see the, the studs, the pins here have grooves on this end, which is the side that comes out first. So we're gonna flip the rifle around and uh, let's fix this over here. We're gonna make sure the grooves are sticking out. So I'm gonna put the first one in. Grab the second one. Again, make sure the groove, the grooved end is in your uh, fingers and the smooth side is going in. So double check to make sure that everything is lined up. And then to start out, I just like to give it a few taps. and then grab our punch. Now I'm using the bigger one that I have. I feel like it covers a lot more surface area when you're punching it in, so do this.
All right, there we have it. All right, so now we're gonna install the safety onto our Timmy trigger so that we could test everything out before we put it back into the stock. Uh, you'll see the hole right here. That's where the little short end, you'll see that the way this thing is bent a little weird. So you wanna put the uh, shorter end up here. This piece right here is what I'm talking about, the short end. This piece is a, lot sh is a little shorter than this end right here, so. You can't, obviously you can't tell that in person on camera, but you can tell in person. So find that hole right there, uh, slide it in there, roll this thing around, and then we'll take the plastic piece, put it in the correct way, and your safety should work, like so. You'll know that you put the plastic piece in wrong if you flip it around your safety doesn't work. So make sure you test this before you put it back into your stock so you don't have to take it all apart again. So again, tail end right here where the hole is, is angled forward. Okay, and then we're gonna test it out with the bolt. Again, rifle chamber is empty. So we'll have safe. It works, and then fire, boom. And then again, like I, I was mentioning earlier, you see this little knob right here? So we could open it, lock it. This bolt will open all at all times. Now, like any time, uh, this bolt can open now with, with the the new uh, Timmy trigger. It doesn't have that extra safety feature that the uh, that Browning has. So you can see it doesn't, uh, or just got the stock trigger. So you can see with the stock trigger, this little piece right here was allowing you to uh, open and close the bolt uh, by pushing down this button when the gun was on safety. Uh, Timmy doesn't have that. So just be aware that your bolt will open in both safety position. All right, so once you have the uh, new trigger installed onto the barreled action, the next thing you'll want to do is uh, remove some material from your stock. So if you can tell how this side is a straight, has a straight edge right here, and this side is a little, you can see how it like uh, narrows down. So I had to, both sides were identical from the factory and what I had to do was uh, I took uh, a knife this is what I used this is my Havilah knife and uh, I just slowly trimmed away at this piece right here just going slowly slowly moving material and uh, testing as I was uh, removing material just to uh, make sure that I didn't take off too much material or didn't take off excessive material that I didn't need to take off so you will have to do that to uh, make sure that your uh, new uh, safety on the Timney trigger doesn't bind up. They don't mention that in the directions, but once I got the barreled trigger, uh, barreled action uh, installed with the new trigger, and I slapped it in here, it would the safety would bind up. So I flipped the rifle around and I looked to see where the safety was catching, and uh, this little piece right here was what was causing the issue so I just took the knife like I said and I just slowly uh, removed material and uh, got the safety to work properly so we'll mount the uh, barreled action back into the stock and then I'll show you how everything works uh, the way it should work
right now so that uh, we bolted the uh, barreled action back into the stock. Again, the two action screws are 35 inch pounds for what uh, browning calls. And uh, next, last thing you want to do is just make sure everything functions properly. Uh, make sure that your <coughs> bolt cycles freely and that your safety works as it should. Make sure that your trigger is also working properly. Uh, I usually give it a good uh, little whack test. Basically what I call it is I'll just whack the bottom of the stock onto the floor uh, a few times pretty hard with the gun on fire uh, with nothing in the uh, <coughs> chamber obviously uh, just to test if to see if the that shock will uh, uh, make the trigger go off and whatnot so small test like that and then uh it should be good to go you know next thing we gotta do is just recite this rifle back in and we are ready to go so yep Pretty simple. Uh, again, if you're not very savvy with tools, then I just recommend you seek a uh, gunsmith to get installed for you. But you know, if you installed a few triggers before on other rifles, and you're just overall a handyman, then this is a very easy and very simple job to do. So, yeah, I think my dad would really like this trigger. I think it is a big improvement. Uh, over the uh, stock trigger and uh, I just ran a few tests again on it and it's actually at two and a half pounds like we uh, ordered it to be so very pleased with that and uh, whatnot so yeah if you guys have any questions drop them down in the comments below again I'm not a professional but simple stuff like this it's fairly easy for me to do so uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and uh, I'll answer what I can. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys in the next video.